And Highland deer stalking is very special. You're in these huge wide open spaces and you're, you're going to the deer. It's team effort, a two man or three man job. It's not a casual encounter. You're finding your deer, you're selecting your deer, and you're getting to within, you know, a very close range. To actually stalk deer on an open hill the way we do um, doesn't happen anywhere else in the world, I don't think. of a sudden they see something the wrong shape or the wrong size, heads come up and they get alarmed very easily. There's lots of eyes watching. Deer in Scotland are truly wild animals. Um, they've been here since time immemorial and you know they're part of the environment. We cull deer that are getting old, that are unlikely to make the, the winter. We take away the poor calves, the old hinds. So, you know, we're keeping a prime stock. I'm basically the estate manager here. Um, I run 40, which is six and a half thousand acres. I run Geik, which is another 18,000 acres, which is an estate further north. Um, and basically both estates are purely managed for sport. Jason is the head keeper here. He's pretty passionate about what he does. He takes people stalking. Um, he manages the day. He decides which beasts are shot. We work to a fairly planned cull. Um, we're part of the local association of deer managers. So each year we decide how many deer we're going to shoot, both stags and hinds. And Jason is, you know, the sharp end to implement that policy. His enormous knowledge on deer and how they move and where they go, um, he's a great asset to the estate. Stalking day starts at about nine o'clock in the morning. We generally take a Land Rover or a pickup and the Argo Cat. Jason and I um, head up the hill and we're spying the hill very regularly to see if there are any deer in that area. We'll generally use the Argo Cat once we get right to the top. We move a mile or half a mile, spend a lot of time spying. You know, maybe we'll stop the Argo Cat, check the quarry. If there are, Jason will take out his telescope see if there's a shootable beast in there. Did you see anything? Ah, uh, there's a wee puckle of hind just on the ridge there. Top left hand corner. Five, just a wee little. Uh-huh. There's a white faced hind up in the hags to the left of the ridge where the row are. Yeah, that's the same lot, eh? All right. Yeah. It can take the whole day to find the deer. The deer can be hiding in a variety of places. I mean, some days we go out and we will see deer and not shoot one because there's nothing that needs shooting. Um, but it is a lot of reconnoitering. Nothing there, we'll head right round onto that far ridge and down the ridge and then spy into the next quarry. We cover six and a half thousand acres here and the places we go stalking are so remote that it would take you, you know, the best part of a day to get there. Or in the old days, they didn't bother stalking it. With an Argo Cat, you are still reasonably fit and able when you get to the other end. It has a very low environmental impact. 
Deer stalking is vitally important to the economy of the Highlands. Jason's wages get paid from the deer stalking um, and it helps us maintain an ecosystem to maintain the land. Deer in Scotland, they're an iconic species. People like to see them around, but they have to be managed. If they were left to just reproduce wildly, they'd be in farmers' fields, you know, they'd be hue and cries because they're damaging rare habitats. Um, everything has to be kept in balance. And, you know, it is part of our job to keep those deer as healthy as possible and in balance. Once we've done our reconnoitering and Jason has spotted a deer that he thinks is a likely candidate, um, the tempo moves up a notch. Jason goes into acquisition mode. He metamorphosizes into a predator and his job is to get the person who's shooting within 100, 150 yards and put them in a position to make a clean shot. But Jason wants that deer in the larder. He's just so focused. Um, and that's part of the fun of going out stalking with him. That adrenaline, you know, you sort of, you get swept up by it. Um, and no, he's, he's very professional at his job. The stag was stopping, we stopped, moving, stop, moving, stop, and then down. There is, um, you know, quite a lot of adrenaline pumping. Uh, it is a challenge, it is exciting. Um, I think there's no denying that. I think when you, you take the shot, that's the least pleasant part of the experience, uh, but it is the culmination and it's why you're there. Yeah, that's not bad, eh? That's fantastic. Typical landed in that drain, eh? And it is a prized, a prized meat. You know, that's, to me, that's a motivation. You know, I like having a piece of venison on my plate. One, two, three. There's a few processes we've got to go through before we actually take it off the hill and down to the larder. Um, and this process is called grelaching. This involves bleeding the stag and removing its intestines to avoid any cross-contamination from the stomach into the carcass. 
it's very important to get it down to the larder as quickly as possible. The quicker we get it off the hill, and the quicker we get into the chiller, the better quality venison we'll get at the end of it. In the old days, they used to use ponies to retrieve shot deer from the hill. Um, these days, it's far more practical to do it with an Argo cat. Hang on. They are pretty heavy beasts. Um, you know, they range, a stag ranges here from 15 to 18 stone. Um, so, you know, quite a lot of meat to, to heft off. Good job. Lovely jubbly. It's the whole lead up to it. It's not sort of wandering around and oop, it pops out and you shoot it there. It's, it's actually, it's the whole build up. It's the excitement that goes with it. It's, it's, a, it's a very humbling experience.